In this video, we will figure out how to efficiently take the derivative of a polynomial function. The ingredients for this are the basic rules for differentiation. The power rule, which says that the derivative of a simple power function x to the n is n x to the n minus 1. The scalar multiple rule, which, which says that the derivative of a scalar multiple of a function is simply what you get by taking the multiple of the derivative of that function. Put another way, you can pull scalars out of the differentiation process. And the sum rule, which says the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. Now, there's a difference rule, which you could write as a separate rule, but in fact, it comes from the scalar multiple rule and the sum rule because you could take f of x minus g of x and rewrite it as f of x plus negative 1 times g of x and apply the two previous rules. But we'll write it out as a separate rule here. And given these ingredients, we're going to be able to take the derivative of any polynomial quite quickly. First, we better review what a polynomial function is. So the ingredients for a polynomial are some basic power functions and some coefficients, some real numbers. And these are paired up with the power functions as products, and you add all of that up, and that is a polynomial function. This exponent, this highest exponent that shows up in your polynomial is the degree of the polynomial, and here we're assuming that a sub n, this coefficient, so-called lead coefficient, is non-zero, because if it's actually zero, then we're cheating, and really the degree should be smaller than n. Here's an example. This appears to be a degree 5 polynomial. 5 is the highest exponent. The lead coefficient, a sub 5, in this case is 2. The constant term, a sub 0, is 9. The linear term, a sub 1, is 12. The quadratic term, a sub 2, is negative 3, because that's minus 3, so the coefficient is negative 3. Notice the coefficients a4 and a3 are actually 0, because there's no cubic term and no fourth degree term. How do we take the derivative of this polynomial? We'll be very careful the first time around, and then we're going to figure out how to be much quicker about it. So the sum and difference rules tell us that we can actually, if you think about it as distribution, you can sort of distribute the differentiation process across all the terms. The derivative of a sum of four terms is the sum of the derivative of those four terms. Now, those first three terms all have scalar multiples on the inside, so the scalar multiple rule says we should be able to slide those out. Now, what's left is simply a bunch of power function derivatives that we need to evaluate. The derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of x is 1, and you can either think of that as the power rule although you really shouldn't need to do that. The better way to think about this is if you look at the graph y equals x, the tangent slopes 1 everywhere. So the derivative of x you should know is 1. And the derivative of 9 is 0 because the derivative of a constant function is 0. So there you have it. You can substitute in those derivative of power functions and simplify what you get. And the derivative is the fourth degree polynomial 10x to the fourth minus 6x plus 12. So let's look at another example. You don't have to write out all these steps. You, can, you, you know that when you use the sum and difference rules, you're going to take the, the derivative of each sum individually. So let's just do it from left to right. So we'll deal with the first term, uh, 3x to the 8. So you have 3 times, what's the derivative of x to the 8? 8x to the 7th minus 12 times the derivative of x cubed plus 2x, the derivative of x squared. And then what's the derivative of negative 5x? It's just negative 5, a line with slope negative 5. And of course, the derivative of the constant function 7 is just 0. So we don't even need to write that at all. And this simplifies quite nicely. There's our derivative. But let's, let's be even more efficient. 3x squared. You can imagine bringing the exponent out and then multiplying immediately by the coefficient. So the 2 is going to pop out. That's negative 10x plus 7. 
how about the derivative of this seventh degree polynomial? The seven is going to come out of the exponent. Negative seven times five is 35. It's going to be negative 35x to the sixth plus the four pops out, four times four, x to the third, so that's 16x cubed, minus 14x. So you should, you should get to the point where derivatives of polynomials happen almost as fast as you can read them. You can take the derivative if you want to. Um, work your way left to right. Think about the power rule. Imagine what that exponent as it pops out, multiplying by the coefficient in front, and just writing that out, and you keep on going, and take your derivative of the polynomial.